Cortinarius. Cortinarius, you're the scariest. Menacing and brown, we leave you there in the ground. Cortinarius, you're the scariest. Menacing and brown, we leave you there in the ground. Oh. I'm gonna try to go back. If everything I tell you about mushrooms sounds like a fairy tale, if you got all these beautiful ornaments and you didn't have a tree to hang them on, what the hell good is it? People's understanding of mushrooms is mushrooms here in the United States, it really has, but we are still so far behind. Can we end, end fungophobia and end ignorance about mushrooms? That, that to me is the big challenge. Spores from a parasitic fungus called cordyceps have infiltrated his body and his mind. Strange things happen up here around shrimp season. Now reports of mysterious figures lurking in the woods. Some have even gone missing only for their bodies to turn up mutilated. Cool. Ew, this is so disgusting. This is huge. Look at this ugly mushroom. Okay. Smells rancid. <laughs> you stunk up the whole house. But my house smells because I brought it in. People are afraid of mushrooms, and you know, it comes out of our, our cultural bias. Uh, People came here were, were afraid of mushrooms, perhaps because where they lived and grew up in their culture, mushrooms were poisonous and to be afraid of. Uh, a lot of people in the United States still think, ooh, slimy toadstool, I don't want to touch that. Which is strange because most every other part of the world appreciates fungi, if not fully in, in, envelops them into the culture. Um, it's really only in the West where we have this deep-seated fear of fungi that's un unprecedented and unfounded. We need to start creating a culture where we, where we discuss fungi like they're plants, like they're animals, like they're another organism on this planet that has a role and a pretty significant and interesting and really complex role. Without mushrooms, we, we would not exist. Mushrooms are part of almost every single ecosystem that we know about. Uh, they help things survive. Fungi are really um, unique organisms. They have their own kingdom. Sometimes the word fungus and mushroom are used interchangeably, but really have different meanings. So fungi, it's made of tiny little threads and that mass of thread called mycelium. So a fungus is basically just this mat of threads, and it's usually invisible. We don't see it. It's in the soil, it's in a log, and it's out of sight, and we don't think of that as the body of the fungus. Some fungi, that mycelium will organize itself into a mushroom. Not all fungi, but some. I think of them as sort of the underdogs of the natural world. They're, they're literally underground healers transforming environments. They're sort of nature's alchemists transforming decaying animal and plant matter into bioavailable nutrients for plants. Nutrients that they exchange between different species of plants in a mycorrhizal network. Myco means fungus. Rhizal means root. So these are fungi that are actually connected to the roots of plants and it's a symbiotic relationship. That mycelium goes out into the soil, brings nutrients to the plant, and the plant, through photosynthesis, feeds the fungus. This is not a once in a while thing. We now think this is the rule in nature. 
over 85% of plants have fungi or mycorrhizal fungi. We estimate 1.5 million to several million species of fungi, and we've only named maybe 5%. With their skills under there, but... It's only when people start to look into fungi and they get bit and they become bemushroomed, is the term, that they realize what they've been missing out on. It's an oxtail broth with uh, piopini mushrooms, crescenza tortelli with black trumpet mushrooms. When certain mushrooms come into season, um, my heart kind of skips a beat in the kitchen in a lot of ways. I get a giddy as hell when I hear that the first black trumpets are popping up or that we can get um, candy cap mushrooms, you know? Uh, their, their value comes in how like fleeting sometimes their season and availability is. Also how delicious and like overwhelmingly cool and fun in, in texture and flavor, aroma, all of those qualities that you want your ingredients to hit, they, they nail. I, I am secretive. I mean, I have shown a few of my spots to people, you know, and that normally wouldn't be able to get there on their own. So it's sort of fun to be able to show people that and let them experience it. But uh, I definitely have spots that I wouldn't share with anyone, you know, and for the simple reason I love mushrooms and I always want to be able to find them when I make the effort to, to go out there and get set up and look. I don't want to get skunked because my friends have been there ahead of me. So. Uh, I like to keep my spots secret. The psilocybe, psilobi, however you want to pronounce it, and the trippy mushrooms, I mean, that, that's an interesting experience, but it's not something that's, a, it's not really a passion of mine. So many cultures around the world have long revered fungi as sacred and honored them for the uh, altered states that they produce. And even contemporarily, there's some people that argue that perhaps through the accessing of altered states, we might get new insights and, and learn new ways to change our cultural belief systems. And I think that's another great benefit they provide that most people are too afraid to talk about or, or don't have any experience with, unfortunately. I'm not part of any local associations. Um, I love the seclusion of mushroom hunting. And I feel that if I'm part of an association, I always just imagine that there'll be large group hunts. There'll be a lot of people. State Park is off. Uh, green. Uh, use all your senses. Um, if you have kids, then you're already ahead of the game. If you don't, maybe you could rent some here at the park because their eyes are really good and they're lower to the ground. What astounds me is that all these people showed up today to help us collect mushrooms for the fair. That is really neat. I mean, sometimes in good years, we have upwards of 80 people. And, it, you know, it's, it's astonishing. People aren't out here collecting edible mushrooms. They're interested in the science, too. And when we set up those tables in there, people are going, oh, my God, look at all these things. Those are really cool. So just for the fair tomorrow, but uh, without the mushrooms, there would be no fair. Recently, through citizen science, amateur mycologists have taken a, a, a much larger role. The people in universities, uh, they're less mycologists, they're less professional mycologists, and people that are in mycology very often go into a totally different career. So amateur mycologists now have the field expertise and the taxonomic expertise to be able to identify mushrooms. Dad, this one's so specific. This is a hardwood decomposer. That is the exchange. And the intelligence um, is, is symbiotically exchanged. Um, and so radical mycology, I think of it as sort of a social philosophy as well as a, an organization. It's taking the understanding of the role of fungi in the environment and the implications for improving human life and the life of other organisms on the planet and actually applying that and not just studying it in a laboratory setting, in a more academic setting, but actually putting these ideas into a real world. So in Olympia, we've done a lot of installations 
of edible medicinal mushroom beds and as well as a few remediation installations to try to clean and trap some pollutants that flow off of parking lots. But these bags are designed so that the petroleum comes off the top of it, gets absorbed up into the bag, consumed in the mycelial network. The basic concept with microremediation is that we utilize uh, by and large, the digestive fungi, the, the fungi that are decomposers that can break down wood and, and other complex organic material, but it turns out can also break down complex chemicals, industrial pollutants, uh, persistent, highly toxic chemicals that up until recently we almost thought we couldn't do anything about. They symbolize solidarity. They symbolize symbiosis and cooperation and collaborative organization amongst all life's organisms in a very real and tangible way and also in a, in a metaphoric way, in a way that we can learn from and study and appreciate. The biggest lesson that I've gotten from the fungi is to keep an open mind. If fungi I've been told my whole life are bad and evil, it turns out they're really wonderful. What else do I need to revisit and, and question? The cereal company called me, said they were in a bind. They needed a new flavor to enhance their product line. I said a mushroom cereal would really stand alone. And we can call them shroomies, the breakfast of champignons.